Welcome back to our 2021 Giro d'Italia coverage here on GCN and Eurosport. Today's stage was given a three-star difficulty rating with over 2,000 metres of climbing in total, most of it located in the second half of the 189 km stage. Starting in Biella, they headed predominantly south towards the finish line in Canale. On their way there, three categorised climbs, but it's an unclassified one that could prove the most pivotal. 2.6 k's at 7.1% and it comes with just 15 k's to go. There was a bit of a fight at the start of the stage two to get into the early breakaway. Eight riders eventually made the day's move in the pouring rain, the best placed on GC being Taco van der Horn of Intermarché Wanty Gobert. He started the day in 79th position, 52 seconds down on race leader Filippo Ganna. The first sprint of the day came at the foot of the first climb, Pillow continuing where he left off last year, taking maximum points for Androni. On to the first climb, and it was Bora Hansgrohe setting the pace, as they had been for much of the day, looking to give Peter Sagan his best opportunity of a stage win by piling the pressure on the other sprinters. And it was working. Yesterday's stage winner Tim Malia dropped with still 48 k's to go. Into the final 20 k's, and the gap to the remainder of the early break down to just 40 seconds. So we had fresh attacks from the peloton, Judo Ciccone following a move made by Tony Gallopan of Adi Dezer Citroën. By the top of that final climb of the day, they were just 19 seconds behind the two riders still out front, Pelo and Van der Horn. Van der Horn, though, wanted to give it one last roll of the dice, and with Pelo unable to follow, the Dutchman set off to try and do the impossible. With under three k's to go, somewhat unbelievably, Van der Horn still had a margin of over 30 seconds on the main peloton. One k later, it was down to 22 as Ciccone and Galapan were finally caught. The peloton, though, had completely miscalculated the strength of Van der Horn. In December, he didn't even have a pro contract. He was then picked up by Intermarché Wanty Gobert, and just five months later, he'd taken his and their first Grand Tour stage win. Nobody could believe it, not even the man himself. Behind him, it was a bitterly disappointed Davide Cimolai who would win the sprint, but only for second place. Peter Sagan unable to capitalise on the work of his team, having to settle for third. It's going to take a long time for this to sink into Taco van der Horn, but the dream is true. You've just won a stage of the Giro d'Italia. Chapeau. This was the rest of the top 10. Elia Viviani in fourth, Patrick Bevan fifth, making two riders from the Israel startup nation in the top five. Vermeers, Gaviria and Betiel rounding out the top eight. In the mountains competition, Vincenzo Albanese has extended his lead, but no change in the pink jersey either. 90 years to the day since it was first awarded at the race, it's Filippo Ganna who gets to spray the champagne on the podium. With the Fini though amongst the riders dropped on the day, it means that Foss, Evenepoel, Almeida and Cavagna have all moved up. Moscon's up to 6th, whilst Vlasov is up to 7th. On the menu tomorrow then, even more climbing than today. The Giro never takes long to find some difficult terrain and that's exactly what they'll face on their route to Sestola. Like today, the first part is flat, but the second half is anything but. They finish just after the Colle Passerone. 4.75 kilometers long, 10% average gradient, 16% max, and it's just two and a half k's to the finish line from there. There's sure to be fireworks and we hope to have your company for our live coverage on GCN Plus or Eurosport. Territory restrictions do apply though, but we hope to see you tomorrow.